Hello everyone, I'm Allison Gonzalez. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works. And today I am going to be talking about and showing you my favorite way to clean up data. So this tool actually exists in two programs and it is the same in both of them. And of course I am talking about the Power Query Editor. Now Power Query was first created and added to Excel to expand its powers. We all know that when we're in Excel, we're just trying to do more and more and more. We wanna have bring in more rows, have more capabilities, do more things without having to write more and different VLOOKUP formulas over and over again in different ways. And so Power Query was added in to Excel years ago, and tons of people still don't know that it is there. And it is a fantastic tool which you can load inside of Excel. You can bring your data in. There's a variety of different connectors to access your data exactly the way that it is formatted wherever it is at, whether that is a on the web or it's already an Excel file or it's a text file or a CSV or it's from a SQL server, wherever that data lives, is in a particular format and so there will be connectors that you'll be able to go get the data exactly as it exists and bring it into Power Query. Then once you're in Power Query, there's a fantastic user interface. What that allows you to do is really minimize to pretty much not having to do it at all and writing code because you're able to just click buttons to do whatever you want to do. Now, when Excel just kept getting pushed to the limits more and more and we got Power Pivot and other features in there to really push the boundaries in Excel. We then created another program, my way of course, I mean Microsoft of course, created Power BI and they used elements from Excel and from Power Pivot and all of Power Query to make this new program. And so maybe if you've been in Power BI, you've seen Power Query, used it there, but a lot of people don't even know that it's the exact same as how it was in Excel. There's a few differences, some of the buttons are in slightly different orders, but pretty much everything that you wanna do is gonna be exactly the same in both of those places. So that is what we are gonna be walking through in this series that I'll be going through here on our Pragmatic Works YouTube channel. We're gonna be going in looking at Power Query in Excel, and we're gonna be looking at Power Query and Power BI, and we're gonna do the same steps in both places so we can see what is the same, what is different, and how does that work in both of those spots. So if you have used Power Query in Excel, but never Power BI, or used Power Query in Power BI, but never in Excel, get ready, we're gonna have some fun. So let's hop into Excel first, because that's where Power Query originated, so we will start over there. All right, so here we are in Excel, and I am going to launch Power Query. I'm gonna connect in to a data set that I brought in, and we're actually gonna connect to the same data set in Excel and then do it again in Power BI. So we can see the exact same file, the exact same path for both of them. So here we are in Excel and we're gonna go up to our data tab. And now this data tab right here, this is where we are going to go to launch Power Query. So we click into that tab, we have this get data button all the way on the left. And now this whole section right here, I've got all of these other kind of quick options, like from a text file or CSV, from the web. So those are right there, easy to access without having to click into something. When I do click on this drop down right here, then I can see I have a lot more options of the different connectors I can use. That way I'm able to go out, bring my data in, it's gonna understand the format that it's in at that source, whether it's from a file, from a database, from Azure, those are all formatted differently on the back end. So this will help it go out, get the data in the right format without scrambling it up and bring it on in. I can also, if I already have that data used it, I can also directly launch the Power Query Editor from this dropdown. We don't have anything in there, so we're gonna bring some data in and then we're gonna load it in to the Power Query Editor. So right off bat, we'll click that dropdown 
And I, this is an Excel file. So my options, first off, I have all of these from file options. I have from database options, from Azure options, from Power Platform, where I'm actually able to even bring in Power BI data sets that are available. Online services, as well as here's a lot from other services that you'll probably end up using like the web connector. But again, we're going with an Excel file, so I'm just gonna go up to From File and then Excel Workbook to bring this on in. Once this loads up, you can just search for that file on your actual device to find it and bring it over. Once we load this on up, it's gonna connect into it and we're gonna see this navigator window anytime we connect into an Excel file because if we have multiple worksheets, multiple tables in that Excel file, we can choose, well, do I want all of them? Do I just want some of them? And you get to pick which ones you want. Anytime you click on one, you are going to see a little sample of that right here in this preview window so you can verify that you're pulling over the correct data. We also want to, once we have that selected, if I wanted to pick multiple ones of these, I would go right here to check select multiple items. I'm just gonna bring in one for now, so I'm good with just clicking right here on the customer table, and we'll bring that one over. Now I've got some options here at the bottom. I've got load and load to, and that would allow me to load this data exactly as it is into Excel or into Power Pivot into my data model. But for us, we wanna to go to Power Query, load this in, clean it up, see how we can access that tool and what we can do there. So we definitely want to go with transform data right here. So when we click on transform data, that is going to launch the Power Query Editor for us. So we can take a look around, see what the structure is, how everything looks. So right over here on my left-hand side, this is a list of all of my queries. Um, they're called queries here in the Power Query Editor, but this would be all of your tables of data, each of your individual sources. Now, every time you could have multiples here and they would just be you know, listed one after the other over here. But when you have them in here, you're going to see a little preview of your data right here. So from your query pane, you can select the one you want, and that is going to show you a preview in the center section. Now I call this a preview because when you're in Power Query, you're only loading the first 999 rows. So we're not loading everything in. You might have a million rows. That's all not going to load in. So you're only loading that for essentially a thousand rows. You're gonna do all of your changes here. Now, speaking of changes, when you're working here in Power Query, you cannot hit the undo button. There is no undo or redo button. You can't do a control Z, control V, any of that. Instead, we have our applied steps section over here in my query setting pane on the right hand side. And now in this applied step, it's gonna list out every single action that Power Query has taken for you or that you have done um, on your own here. And they're all listed in the order that you have done them. So we can see, we just came in, we haven't done anything yet. Power Query did all of these cleansing steps for us. Took a look at the data, the nice little robot brain in there, went through it and identified a lot of the things that needed to change in this. If you're like, what if I mess up? What if I need to do an undo or change something? I did something wrong. Well, you would just come over here to your applied steps. And if it's completely wrong, you can just hit the X for that step to fully remove that step. It's like it never existed. If it's just a little bit wrong, you might want to modify part of it. Well, then you can go to this gear icon instead, and that's going to launch whatever window you are in to make that change. Now, some of the steps won't have that, and you would need to fully remove it and redo that step, but it's always worth it to check to see if you could just redo parts of it instead of having to redo the entire thing. Now, good data practice would be renaming. You always wanna have good, consistent naming for your table names, your column names, everything like that. Make it really good to identify what is there for you as well as anyone else who's gonna be looking at this data, this report later on.
So to rename it, I can rename over here on the right in this name section, or I can just come over here, click right into this name over here on the left. Either one is fine. We know that Microsoft loves to give us options. So you're gonna see the same thing available in multiple places, sometimes two, three, sometimes even four different places in Power Query. Um, and it's gonna do the same thing, but you'll see a lot of buttons. A lot of those are gonna be duplicates. Now this is your general setup and we're gonna see the same exact structure in Power BI. The main difference between Power Query in Excel and Power Query in B and Power BI is the color. We can see now we have all these nice green accents. Everything's very like Excel toned. When we move into Power BI, which of course is yellow, is kind of that program color, everything is instead going to be yellow. So a little different color palette, so it's gonna be easy to identify whether you are in Excel Power Query or Power BI. Also, you're gonna have the little icon up in that top left corner, which will always let you know where you're at. There's also a little bit of a difference of your home ribbon structure. The same buttons are there, but we have kind of our new source buttons are at the end here in Excel. And we'll notice that when we go into Power Query and Power BI, they're kind of over here towards the front middle of that home ribbon. But we do have the same buttons. Those are just flipped over. Why they did that, I don't know. It would make sense that they would have put them in the same places, but I don't know. It just keep in mind, those are available for you at the end when we're adding in new sources here in Excel and in Power BI, they're gonna be over in the middle. We also have a transform ribbon as well as this add column ribbon and a view ribbon as well. So a few different options here in this upper ribbon. Now a lot of these buttons will also be available if you just right click into the column header. So we can see we have a lot of similarities over here. So I've got all of these kind of remove columns. Well, I also have this whole section where I can remove columns right here. I can see down here this transform, a lot of these transform features I'm gonna see in this transform section right here. And then I've got a split column over here, but also look right there, I got my split column here. So a lot of these things you're gonna see in both places, it does the same exact thing. You're just gonna realize, hey, I'm a ribbon person or I'm a right click person or whatever is easy for you in the minute, it's gonna be the same buttons. So let's just do a little bit here, get started, get used to working in Power Query. And we'll just start off by getting rid of all of the columns we don't need. I've got 29 columns in here, a lot of junk that's just not necessary. So my favorite way to remove columns is actually to go up to this Choose Column button. So I like to go here because this gives me a whole window with all of my columns in a list. So instead of having to kind of right click and remove or multi-select and hit remove or remove other columns, that process is so annoying when you have to scroll at the same time, keep holding control, the chances of clicking the wrong column are really high. So instead, I like to just go back up to this choose column button. I click on that top part since this is a two part button. Click on that top part to launch that window right here. And there, we've got a nice list of all of our columns. So I can just go ahead, deselect them all if I only wanna select a few, do whatever's fastest for the amount you want to choose. Let's see, I'm gonna bring over the first name, I'll bring the last name over. Let's grab their birth date and let's bring over yearly income. And, and when I hit okay, we're gonna see that those are the only four columns left. If you're like, oh no, I got rid of a column I need or I kept a column I don't want. Well, now we can go back over here to our applied steps and I can look at this remove other column step. I have a gear icon, so I know that as soon as I click on that gear icon, I can get back into that window. Now if I really did a bad job with this, I got a lot of columns I didn't need, and it might just be faster to redo it, I could just fully remove that step and do it over again. For this one, you can see I can just click that gear icon, launch this window up again, and then make any changes, add, remove anything. All of those columns are still here, and I can access them. 
is I want to point out that whatever step we are on right here, we are also going to see this, the actual code that is written for this step. We did none of this. We didn't have to write any of it. We got to use this user interface. We got to click on the buttons and it generated the code for us. And now this code in Power Query uses the mashup language. We'll also see that language a lot of times written as just like M query or even just M. So this is a language that is kind of powers Power Query. It is written in that formula bar. We can also access that code in our advanced editor to see all of the steps all at one time and see the full structure of that. And our advanced editor button is right over here on our home ribbon. Now with this, again, we've just clicked some buttons. We've dramatically cleaned up our data without having to write any lines of this code. So if you remember, here's our original source. This is the actual whole Excel file that has everything in it. We can see that navigation window. That's where we picked what we were bringing over. And a little navigation pop-up that came up. We're like, all right, we're just going to bring that customer table over. So here's that customer table in its raw form. Power Query looked at that and was like, aha, that first row should be their headers. So then it promoted the headers for me. And then we also can notice right here, there's this little icon on the left side of every column header, and that's your data type. Now I can change my data type here or up here. You'll end up having a preference. I personally like to change it on my header because I just identify it with the icon more than the terminology a lot. So Power Query looked at this and was like, oh, let's see, that customer ID, that is a whole number. This alternative key, that is actually, you know, that's text down here. So it went through, looked at each of these types. Here's all of the different data types you can set in here and went through and set these. Sometimes it is not right and you would need to adjust it. So it's always good to check through, see what Power Query chose, make sure that it was the correct one for your data in that column. And finally, moving back down into the present, that last applied step, which is where we removed other columns. Now, I want to show you one other thing in here, and then we're going to take a look at Power Query and Power BI and kind of look through these same structures. And that is, let's add in a new column. I'm going to show you my favorite way to do this, which is a very easy way to add it in, again, without having to write a single line, a single word of code. So right up here in your add column ribbon, we are going to click on this column from examples button. So we're going to click on this and we just get to put in now exactly what I want to see. So as soon as I click on this column from example button, right here, it is going to give me a new column and I'm going to write in that first cell of that first row exactly what I want to see. Now, as long as you can get that from the data that already exists in the rest of the table, Power Query will look at that, figure out the structure of it, where that data came from in the rest of the row, and then it will deliver that to you row after row after row after row, which is amazing and a huge time saver. A lot of times I already know how to write it the real way, but it's just faster <laughs> to do it with column from example. So for me, I want to be as efficient as I can with my time. And so I end up using column from example a lot to get the right answer in the quickest way. So let's just say with this new column, we want to have a combined first and last name. So I'm going to see their first name with a space and then their last name. So what I'm going to write here in column one is exactly that. I'm going to write in their first name with a space and then their last name. As soon as I hit enter, it's going to go look for, in this case, John, and go find it. And then it will find the space. It will identify that I added that in as text. We'll then go to the last name column, and then it's going to repeat that row after row after row. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to go ahead and click into this. You can see I've got a bunch of options already in my drop downs. So my IntelliSense is trying to help me out. Part of that nice little robot brain working behind the scenes to make your life easier. And I'm just going to go ahead and type in that first name 
from that first row. I can see this is already an option. And now it's showing me right here in the parentheses what column it's coming from. And now this is a correct column. So if that's correct, I could just click this. I've already written it out, so I don't really need to. But as long as you're choosing it from the correct column, you can click this. So I'm gonna put a space here. And now that space will be recorded and added between the first and last name for every other row after this. And then I'm also going to put in now the last name. So I'm going to make sure that I type that exactly. Now, column from example is also really good because let's say I wanted to change the casing and this maybe came in in all uppercase or all lowercase and I wanted to change that around. All I have to do is write it how I want to see it in this column and it would do that so it can save you some time and some extra steps. So now that I have exactly what I want to see in this column, I'm just going to hit enter and there we go. I can see it's gone through, looked at all of these names and all the way down they are lining up and going through well. Of course I can change this to let's call it full name and as soon as I hit OK, we're going to get out of this grayed out space where all I really can do is write in my new column and kind of be back to our normal view. Now I can reorganize my columns here. So if you want to kind of put them in a particular order, let's say I'm going to move that full name column over next to my first and last name, I can do that. So let's go ahead, take this back into Excel and see what our data looks like. And then we're going to go into Power BI. So we're going to go to our home ribbon and then we are going to go to close and load. Now I also have some alternative options. If this was a lot of data, like too many rows that would fit in Excel, I could load this to Power Pivot. In this case it's not, I'm going to do a regular close and load and I'm just going to take this in and look at it in Excel. So as soon as I do that, it is going to start loading that up. It's got 18,000 rows, so no problem here. I can see my first name, my last name. Here's that full name column that I added. Notice that it's in order that I put it in in Power Query. I've also got that birthday column, yearly column. And I can do all of my regular Excel stuff that I want to do with this now. I can do any sorting. I can do any other formulas, anything else I want to do here in Excel. I would be able to do that with this pre-cleaned up data. If you brought it down here and you're like, ah, I did already forget a column. I should have had something that I didn't do. At any point, you can go back to that data tab, to that get data button, launch Power Query Editor, and you'll be right back there. You can see all of your steps here over on the right, all of the columns, and you can change, modify, do anything that you need to in here. So let's go take a look at launching and bringing this data into Power Query from Power BI. All right, so here we are in Power BI, and we are gonna do those same steps that we just did in Power Query in Excel, but here in Power BI instead. So we also have a get data button here, and this is on your home ribbon. So we're in the Power BI desktop. In our home ribbon, we have this get data button. Just like with Excel, we have this whole section here of recent and common sources, and I have a drop down on my main one of a lot of more common ones as well. So for all those ones, I can see I can click Excel from either right here or right here. It's a common one, so you've got some easy, quick places to get that. I can also, if I click that top part of the button or the more from the drop down, I can launch a full window with all of the 100 plus connectors that exist. So I can easily filter those down and even just scroll through and see all of the different connectors. And again, this just helps Power Query understand the structure of the data, how it is formatted, make sure it brings it back to you here in Power Query in the best way. So for us, we're gonna go with Excel Workbook. So I'm just gonna go up, click this Excel Workbook link right here and bring in that same file. Now, once you have selected it, we're gonna see this navigator window again, just like we saw it in Power Query in Excel. I'm gonna go with that customer table again. I can see that preview for it. And now at the bottom, I have a single load button. And the same thing, if I hit this load button, that is gonna load all of my data here 
into Power BI. So if I hit load, we're not cleaning anything up. It's gonna load it as is. However, we want to do that, so we're gonna go with that transform data, that middle button again. As soon as I do that, we are gonna launch Power Query. This time, you can see it looks pretty much exactly just like the one in Excel, except now we've got yellow as our accent color. Our home ribbon, again, looks mostly the same, except we've got those new source and recent source buttons here at the very front of it, instead of at the kind of back or the like right side of it like they were in Excel. But kind of same features. If I do right clicks in my column header, I'm gonna have all of the same ones. And again, I can see I've got remove here, I've got remove up here. I've got my transform drop down here. I've got this transform section over here. So same thing, you can do that either in the ribbon or right click in your header. You're just gonna end up with a preference for one over the other. I normally tend to be a right click person, but you're gonna find which one you do the most. I also have a transform ribbon, an add column ribbon, as well as this view ribbon. Those are all the same. Now back over here, I can see it's done the same applied steps for me. Here's the source where our file starts. Navigation, we chose we wanted just the customer table. It looked at that data and was like, hmm, that first row is your headers. So it promoted the headers for us. And again, it looked over at the data type, this little icon here, and it changed the type for them. So I can see here, we're currently in the present in the change type step. Let's do the same thing we did in Excel in Power Query. And let's go up to this Choose Column button. And again, we're just gonna get rid of all the ones and just leave a few of them. So we'll click the top part that is gonna launch our menu. I'm gonna deselect most of these. I only wanna keep, let's say, first name and last name and birth date and income, we'll say. And just like when we were in Power Query in Excel, if I misclick, add one I don't need, don't add one I do need, I can always come back over here to my applied steps and go to this gear icon to get back in and modify my column choice. Now with these all set, I have my amazing add column from example feature available to me here in Power Query in Power BI as well. So could I make this, if I knew how to do this, could I do this from just creating a regular column? Yes, by all means. But like I said, with the Excel one, a lot of times it's faster to just do a column from examples than to try to, especially if it's a really complicated thing you're trying to do, a lot of kind of little pieces in there, a lot of elements that you're adding in or changing. Sometimes it's faster just to like give the answer what you wanna see in that new first cell, the first row of that column, and Power BI will, or Power Query will write all of that on the back end for you. So I'm gonna click that button, it's gonna gray everything out. Now we can see we got the yellow accents instead of those green accents. And I'm gonna click into that column one again. And just like last time, I'm gonna write, cause I want this to be my full name column. I'm gonna write the first name, put a space in it, put the last name in. And as soon as I hit enter, it's gonna identify where I got each of those pieces from and then do that for me every single row. So I'm gonna type in my first name, give it a space, write the last name, make sure I spell that correctly. And I'm going to hit enter. As soon as I hit enter, you can see it goes through all of those. Here is the actual line of that M query, that mashup language code that was written for me on the back end. I didn't have to write any of it. You can see it did a text combine, it pulled from the first name column, gave a space and then it pulled from the last name column and then repeated that every row for me. So this looks great. I am just gonna rename this to full name here in the header there and hit okay. It's gonna take me out of my grayed out column from example space and put me back in here. And again, just like before, if I would like to, I can rearrange this. So if I want to drop that in after the last name, I am able to do that. And now when I wanna look at this data, if I'm all done in here, I can go ahead, go to my home ribbon, and this time I'm gonna go with close and apply. 
What that means here is when I'm going to close out Power Query. So we're going to close this down. And then the apply is referencing my applied steps. So a little bit of terminology change from Excel Power Query, but does the same process. Essentially, it is again going to apply all of those steps to that 999 rows and beyond. So we've only got those 999 in here, but we know we've got 18,000 some rows in our full data set. So as soon as we close this, it will apply these applied steps to everything else, um, not just our little preview sample that we can see right here. So we'll click that close and apply. We can see it start loading here. We always get our little uh, pop-up window that's gonna show us that where it's at, that process. I can see all of my data loaded here in my fields pane here on the right, and we are up in our report view. When I move down to my data view here on my left-hand side, moving into my data view, I can see my full table of data. Again, all of the columns are in the order that I put them in in Power Query. So it is also important to note that you can change the order for what you'll see in your data view, but when you're in your fields pane in your report view, they're in alphabetical order. So it doesn't really matter the order that you put them in in Power Query um, if you're only looking at your fields pane because they're going to be alphabetical over here. But if you're going to be doing some stuff in your data pane um, or your data view, it is helpful to modify that around if you need to, if you have a lot going on and you want certain sections to be together. All right, so this was our quick introduction to Power Query. We got to see how Power Query works in two different places. All right, so this is the first video in our Power Query series. We got to see how Power Query looks in Excel as well as how it looks in Power BI. We were able to do some quick cleaning up in there, look at the structure of where our buttons, where our options are at, and then we were also able to, once we closed out Power Query, we were able to see how does that data look in Excel and how does that data look in Power BI once we are all done. So stay tuned. We're gonna be having a few more videos in this series. So if you have an idea or you have a question, you just want to know something of how something works in Power Query, let me know in the comments below. If this was totally new for you and you didn't know that Power Query existed in Excel or you knew it existed in Excel but not Power BI or vice versa, let me know as well. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll know when the latest videos come out. So here on our Pragmatic Works channel, we cover all across the Power Platform and beyond in Microsoft land, doing all of these fun programs and giving you guys lots of hopefully helpful tips and tricks and hints how you can do things easier and better. So. If you like this and you want to dive in more, we have a lot of training, not just here on our Excel, not just here on our YouTube channel, we also have a lot on our on-demand learning platform where you can dive in to almost 100 some courses that are hours and hours and hours long. We have a ton on Power BI as well as a bunch on Excel. So I will see you all in the next video.